Hello and welcome to today's video where we are going to talk uh, about the OB100. Last time we talked about organization blocks and what are those and about OB1. And you can see we have a cycle counter in OB1 that is right now counting how many times did my PLC execute the program. Today we're going to, or, or now, depending on when you're watching the video, uh, we're going to talk about the OB100, which is the startup organization block, which is called and executed only one time and exactly at the beginning of our program. So even before the cycle starts. So we have OB100, which sits before the cyclic behavior of our PLC starts. Therefore, let me go offline. I have my simulation already running. Um, we will add a new block and this will be an organization block and there we have startup right startup and you can see automatic number is 100 and i can change it a little bit but i do not recommend changing it and you can see it's only a specific you can only choose from some specific numbers let's keep it at 100 most people will know uh, most plc people will know if you talk about uh, ob100 what exactly it is so we keep it at 100. <coughs> So now I have this OB100, which looks like a noble function, right? We all know that. Um, and what I actually want to do in this is the first thing I want to count how many times has my PLC been started. Therefore, let's add new data in our data block here. Um, startup counting, right? Startup OB100 count. Yeah, double integer maybe. I'll take int. much yeah sometimes it's a bit slow here <clears throat> so what i want is here on this block i want to count and this i can do with this add block the same we did with the ob1 i want to have a count and every time we start i want to add one on top of this good perfect now i need to download here also including the hardware because we made hardware changes right Calling a new OB actually changes something within the hardware. Uh, so you will also have to download the hardware configuration. So right now you see the counter is at zero because my PLC has not restarted. If you download the program, the PLC does not restart. If I now do stop and run, you will see the counter as one. If I do stop and run again, it's still at one, right? You see, it doesn't change anything because every time the PLC starts, you see it with the cyclic counter it's actually resetting to zero. To avoid this, for now, I will talk about retaining values later on. I will just turn on this retain thingy here, which actually uh, limits, uh, or not limits, restricts the PLC to reset this bit or this variable, and it will keep the value. You see, three restarts, four restarts, five restarts, six restarts. That's it, right? Now I only know how many times the PLC has restarted. And now I could put anything into my OB100 that I want to be executed one time and exactly at the beginning of our PLC uh, startup, right? In our example, we will use um, the system time to actually store the value when was the PLC started the last time, right? So that we know, hey, this is the time, this is how long it's been running, this is how many cycles, this is how many restarts we had, and this is exactly when it was reset the last time. <clears throat> and therefore, I will, in my OB data, I will create a new variable here that is, um, I will call it a last restart time. And this is date and time, because I want the date and I want the time. So if I download this now, you will see the date and time will be well, somewhat in the past, 1900, 1990, uh, because we haven't now changed anything. So even if I restart here and everything, it won't do anything. Yeah, and you see my uh, my counter here has been reset because we had to reinitialize the memory because I made changes here in the data block. Talking about this at a later point. <clears throat> So the only thing we need to do is in our startup function, which can be used for initialization or for storing uh, this startup time right now, I want to somehow store this um, startup time. Therefore, I will use a move operation and I will move some information into our 
last restart variable here, right? Which information do we put in here? The system time. There is a block down here somewhere there, extended instructions, date and time. We can actually read the system time inside the PRC. We have system time, rd sys t, read system time. And we have rd log t, read local time. Local time is with summer time, so plus one hour and winter time minus one hour or however you want to see it. I want the system time, so really without any summer time. I put this in. Yep, you see we need two values and we need to select the data type. The data type should be date and time in our case. And those two, one is the output, the current time should go to the to our move instruction, will be pushed into our uh, into our data block. And the second one is just a return value, we can't put anything. I will just make those two as temporary variables because we don't need them later on. Uh, the first is return value is a word. 16-bit that just goes there. If you don't know which data type goes somewhere, just hover on top, leave your cursor here, and you will see the data, the date, uh, the, the data type that needs to go there. Uh, what one? What's this now? Should be date and time. Yep, date and time. Um, current system time, which is in date and time. So I can just take those two. One goes to the output. One goes to the input of our move instruction. And the return value. It needs the return value because it's a function. Functions need to have all the inputs and outputs connected that are there. So if I download now, I go in my OB, you see this is still set to 1990, right? That's my last startup time. I will need to stop and run the PLC. And you see this is the current time. You can see on my uh, this is my PC time actually because I'm running the simulation. And this is today and also the time without summer time. But now it's in summertime, so it's actually a little bit later, but that's okay. See, and whenever I change here, whenever I restart my system, you will see it's some seconds, right? Because that's the restart time. Yeah, that's OB100. You could put a lot of initialization processes. You could uh, init initialize variables. You could reset system modules. You could do many things in this. It's a very commonly used organization block. But that's it for now. Uh, if you still have any or if you have any questions on the topic, just leave a comment below, um, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you the next time around. Bye-bye.